understanding how to teach a kid how to shoot, which I think this is probably one of the biggest things. So, you need a volunteer. Who wants to volunteer? Excellent. So here's what I would do at a young age. So I would have the kids line up, and I would have the kid put your hand, your left hand, on my shoulder. I'd hold the ball like this. I'd physically put his foot or her foot right here, close to the ball, right there. Now, when you kick, go and put, pull your foot up, pick your foot up. Now at this point, I, I teach the kids, this is where I want you. Go ahead and put your hand there for balance. This is where you're shooting. Right here on this bone, this is where you have to shoot, right here. So, I'll hold the ball. Go ahead, nice and easy, 10 times, nice and easy. There you go, lock your ankle. It can't be sloppy, it can't be sloppy. Lock your ankle tight, there you go. And now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Making sure that they hit it right on their laces. Toe has to be down, right here, pop, pop. Because it's, it's technique, technique. How do you pass the ball? So many times we see the kids, they pass, and they'll cross their foot over when they pass. You'll see this, we do this. We need to teach them, it's like, how many of you guys golf? Anybody golf here? I'm not a very good golfer. But if you golf, if you watch them, it's like a, a golf swing, up, through, up. So when we cross over, we want to teach them not to cross over. They got to balance and up. Balance and up. So you're bending. As you bend, you see how I bend. That's it. You want to bend that knee. So when I pass this ball, bend. That's the most important thing, the proper technique. So skill, proper technique. Um, and, and believe me, they'll find the enjoyment of this game when they're when they become successful. A lot of people say, how do you keep these kids in the sport? Because they're gonna leave for football and basketball, and they're gonna leave for this and leave for that. I say, you know what? I'll tell you right now. If they're successful, they don't leave. I've got kids that I've had since they're six years old. They, would, they love the sport. It's like, to them, they have never had a burnout. They've never been burned out because I'm so energetic, positive. They want it. They're, and I'm always giving them something more, whether it's the Brad Friedel camp, whether it's a national tryout, whether it's going and guest playing with another team. They're always getting something different. So that's the most important thing is if they're technically sound, most of these kids are gonna keep, they're gonna stay in the sport. The only time you see kids leave the sport is when they get to a point where they struggle. And I've seen quality players struggle when they get older and that's when they leave because your big fast strong kids now cannot compete with those technical kids that are now technical and they're big fast and strong so that's when you start to lose players they're like I can't do this anymore I can't play with you know I'm not because they gained success at a young age and we left them we let them gain all this success and then all of a sudden that success dies out and before you know it now I'm not that player that everyone looked at as, as the man anymore. So they decide to leave the sport. So I think having that, and you guys are going to see them. You're going to have them. I've seen a couple of these midview kids. I'm like, if I had that kid for six months, I guarantee you he would be a stud. Or she, I've seen some of the players. I've, a couple of the fast players. I'm like, because it's nice to have a fast player, but now it's, it's also nice to teach them the technical side of the game and see how that game opens up for them. So I think, uh, I think that's the biggest thing. Challenge every kid, be positive with every kid, because I can tell you guys this story, which we got time. I love stories. So Scott, I got this kid that played with me and Tony. Tony and I. My dad coached him. We were on this Hungarian team, a lot of quality soccer players. This kid would come to every training session, every game, and my dad would put him in and get his time to play, but he was very, it was just, he was out there and he was, could barely move, you know, he was struggling. He struggled. Struggled from the time he was 10 years old, 11, 12, all of a sudden 13. He was there. He was everywhere, at every camp, every training session, every tournament. He might not have had the most playing time, but he was there. 
he was watching us. There were times that he wasn't even on that roster as we got older, but he was there watching us, sitting on the sideline, you know, supporting the team. Dad never said a word. This kid went from a mediocre player because he was weaker and he was fragile as a young kid, but technically he was okay, to a kid that made it to Allstate, a kid that went to North Carolina, Gatorade Player of the Year, played on the U.S. national team. How does this happen from a kid that could barely touch the ball at a young age? It was the dedication. It was what he did outside of the game to catch all of us. He caught us. So right now, some of these players might not have the technical ability, but I had a long talk with them. I said, those, those players that are, are right here, those players are right here, those players tend to get comfortable while these players start to work. They start to see, hey, I can do the same thing as that, that player who's playing for the U.S. national team, or I could do the same thing. They, so they start to challenge themselves while this guy takes a break because, hey, I'm always on top. I don't have anything to worry about. Sooner or later, those other kids will catch them. So I think being positive with these kids, doing the technical side, I would suggest um, futsal for the kids. I don't know what you guys do in the winter, but I think that's something where you guys would see a huge, a huge value to it. Futsal is the way to go. You'll see a huge way, you'll see a huge difference in the way these guys are playing. And even in the U.S. national team, now they, they have a, their curriculum, they're, they're bringing in futsal. So there's a couple of places that have futsal and we could talk about that, but I think having a system to where these kids have something for winter, possibly, even if it's training, um, I think would be a huge value to your community. So, you guys have any questions? What about just indoor? Indoor's know? good, but the reason why I like futsal is because we're, we're working on this technical side of the game, which indoor is good, don't get me wrong, if they're getting trained during the week, because if we could still fall into that indoor game where you know, just like we train at Overland, we could do that. The only thing is, it's got the, it has the walls and it's a bigger space. With futsal, it's a tighter, tighter space, heavier ball, and it's on a hard surface. So it's, it's not very forgiving as far as you've got to learn how to yank the ball away from an opponent. Otherwise, they're taking the ball away from you. You're in, you got to work your way out of, of situations. And so, I've had a player where they went, you know, and they went to a regional setting. Well, the coaches didn't care for them because this player was big, fast, strong, and in even in outdoor, they couldn't work themselves out of a tight position. Whereas futsal, it there's no hiding. There's constant moving, moving off the ball. There's four players and a goalkeeper. You can only pass the ball back once, and then to the goalkeeper, and then you have to pass half court before you could drop it back to your keeper again. So there's a lot of, it's a quick play and it's quick, it's movement of the ball. It's understanding to, you can't just stand in a position. Like a lot of times on the bigger fields, even in indoor, you'll see a right back sit. After they pass the ball up, they just sit and wait until the ball comes back to them. And then they get involved. Futsal, they're constantly involved in the game. So I think, and even if they don't play futsal and they do indoor, if there's a gym, that you have, and I have some futsal soccer balls that I can let you use, but even for that heavier ball, it teaches the kids to keep the ball on the ground. It's a heavier weighted ball, so now they're, they're moving the ball and it's not bouncing. You know, there's no bounce to it. They're passing the ball on the ground. So I think that's gonna be huge with, with developing the players here. Any questions? You guys learn anything today? So, so, my biggest thing is this. I don't care what jersey you wear, where you play, I want to make players. This is my passion, my dream. This is my life. I love to coach. I love to teach these kids because you just don't know. And you get bragging rights, too. Because now I can walk around and say, you know what, i got a kid playing for the U.S. national football team. And I've done that this past week. I'm proud of myself. I've had this kid for a, a long time. You know, six, six, seven years old, I've worked with this kid, and now two of them that went there, that trained in 
Akron went to um, Kansas City and trained in the national pool where there were teams training in Florida, California, Texas, Chicago. They had all these regional futsals uh, training sessions everywhere. And these guys have made it. And to me, so that's my, you know, it's my, it's my passion. I love it, you know. And, and so for us, please do us a favor. If you guys ever need anything, and I'll give you guys my number. You guys can call me directly. We want these kids to succeed. And the most important thing is being positive. Because at the end of the day, if we're not, and we start calling these kids out, well, Jimmy, what are you doing? You just kiss the kids. They don't respond by someone yelling at them. They respond by direction. And I'll tell you what, if a kid loves their coach, and truly they see that that coach pushes them, is fair and puts confidence in these kids, you'll see a huge difference. These kids will run through a brick wall. They will. They'll do whatever you ask from them. So I think that's the most important thing. Having an identity, I think going forward, and we could sit down and talk about that. How do we want people to perceive this area midview? Do we want to just go and have them kick and run and create high school players? Because eventually those will play at just the high school level. Or do we want to somehow influence these kids to where they can play at possibly a Division One, Division Two, even a Division Three college? And I'll tell you one thing I'll I'll tell you guys, uh, I'll ask from you guys, is what do you think the two positions in college soccer, the two hardest positions to find in college soccer are? Center back. That's one of them. Keeper. You got it. So I told him, I said keeper and goalkeeper, uh, goalkeeper and striker. He said, no. I can find a striker anywhere. I can find someone that can break the line who's fast and strong. I can't find a center back who's smart enough to receive the ball under pressure and play out of pressure. It's a very tough position. So any of you guys that have keepers, that's keepers are a huge commodity. I just got back from Edinburgh and I was talking to the coaches and they said that's the first thing they always look for as a keeper. It's a huge position, especially girls soccer, women's soccer. So, Thank you guys so much. If there's anything you guys need, you've got, do you have, you have Tony's number. Do you have my, you have my number as well, correct? I don't know. I if, know. We'll, I might have it in the stream. Okay. So what I want to do is if you guys want my number and you guys have any questions at all, anytime, give me a call. Because I think the most important thing is, I can, I can be honest with you, I don't know everything about the sport. I know what works for me, what I've I've done so far to get players at playing at a high level. Tony, he's had kids at six, and this is the thing, he's, when you have them for such a long time, he had kids at six years old, his team was ranked number 10th in the nation. You know, there's a lot of teams in the United States. You're facing uh, teams from New, New Jersey to California, Texas. You know, I remember Tony telling me, we're on number 61, 62, 63. 64, 65 wins. I'm talking on a national setting. They were beating teams that were ranked number three to build their, their rankings up. Um, but he had them at such a young young age, and we incorporated futsal, and, and we do a lot of the technical, a lot of technical. So, And that's something that we can we can talk about, Scott, is if coaches need, you know, we're, we're going to be doing some foot skills here, which I'm happy that we're, you know, we're a part of that. I think that it's okay for the coaches to get involved. A lot of times you guys want to just sit out and uh, you guys let us do our thing. But I would tell you guys what, to get out there and try the moves, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Because you might catch something. You know, well, Scott, we, we don't want to roll any ankles or anything, but I'm telling you, like you have no idea that with a little bit of training, before you know it, it's there's simple stuff that you might think, oh my gosh, he's doing this, he's pulling the ball back. But if you break stuff down for the kids, and everything should be broken down. So you roll, you step, and you touch. And roll, and step, and touch. Like for the kids, before you know it, they'll, they'll get it. So I'll give you guys my number if anyone wants my number before we leave. And if you guys have any questions, please contact. You know, you guys can contact me and ask anything at all. I appreciate you guys coming out here because, I, I mean, that just speaks volumes of what you guys want to do. You guys